as we all know, during these strange times, travel is one of the industries that are the most affected by COVID-19 in the manner and the frequency in which people have been uh, traveling over, say, the last half year, the last six months has actually changed. And the future of traveling looks very different than how it did before. And this panel is especially important for us to understand how innovation can actually help travel focused companies right through the changes that's coming ahead. And today we're very grateful to have uh, Honest Jun, she is the moderator right next to me. Thank you, Hannes, uh, to moderate our World Travel Tech panel. And just a little bit about her. She has 20 years of startup and finance experience in the high tech online media, e-commerce, and travel industries. She's currently the co-founder of Mojo Domo Group and the founder of 2020 Limited. And I would like to thank you for organizing this panel. And also let's welcome our speakers next to her. We have Catherine So, Managing Director of the Northern Asia Region Expedia Group Brands and Bart Beering, uh, the Chief Sales and Marketing Officer at Marriott International Asia Pacific. Uh, honest, I'll leave the time to you guys. Thank you. Thanks for introducing our guests. Okay, so we better talk about, you know, our travel with our distinguished guests with over two decades of experience. I think all of us, when we act together, we got 60 years of experience, which is quite a lot. Oh, no, that sounds so old. Industry. I'm not sure I like that uh, <laughs> introduction, though. <laughs> okay. okay, travel is definitely one of the major components of lifestyle, especially for Hong Kong people. Living in the heart of Asia, it is part of our culture. We travel a lot. However, with the current situation of, uh, of COVID-19, pandemic, the travel and hospitality industry is hurting most in among all the sector. Let's start with one of the most asked questions among our friends. When can we travel? According to the recent McKinsey report in June, the travel sector will not fully recover until 2023, at least it's from US. Alata also released the update analysis uh, for in April for COVID-19. We will see the global airline passenger revenue drop around, you know, by 314 billion USD in 2020. But what do you think about, you know, recovery for the hotel for the industry shaking up both short term and long term from well, the hotel industry? I am cautiously optimistic. Uh, we've obviously gone through a really, really tough time mm. over the course of the last couple of months. The travel industry, the hospitality industry in particular, have been uh, badly affected, and that includes our, uh, our organization. The, um, at the height of the crisis, around 40% of our hotels, we have 800 hotels in Asia Pacific, were closed or closed for reservations. But that number is now down to 15%. So we are starting to see that uh, business is picking up. Also, during the height of the crisis, we saw single-digit occupancy in China, but in the month of June, we achieved 45% occupancy, which is really quite encouraging. For whole China? Or That's for the whole of China. So we have 400 hotels in China, and uh, we ran 45% occupancy, which is, uh, which is pretty good. And we saw really, really good demand for domestic leisure. Uh, so domestic leisure destination like Sanya, Chengdu, et cetera, et cetera, did really, really well. And the last point I'll make is staycations. Mm. All of us live here in Hong Kong mm. and, you know, we obviously can't go anywhere. But what we've seen a lot of is uh, demand for staycations in our hotels here in Hong Kong in particular. Yeah, stay staycation is a new term, you know, after COVID-19. That's right. Yeah. And how about for the OTA industry? What is your view, you know, about... Uh, after COVID-19. Yeah, well, it'll certainly be a very interesting time for the industry, right? Uh, nothing is normal, for sure. Um, but, you know, like Bart, uh, we're we're also cautiously optimistic. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of bright spots in the in, in this industry that we're very encouraged to have seen in the past, um, you know, past month or so. Um, domestic is certainly a bright spot. Uh, there is a lot of last minute booking as well as a lot of advanced booking. Uh, it's an indication that people are really itching to travel, right? They're like, we don't know if we can go yet, but you know, we will we'll book six months in advance anyways, if there's a good deal, just because we really, really want to make that trip. Um, certain destinations, uh, beach destinations, 
destination, remote destination, nature destination, um, um, you know, allow them to, you know, keep the social distancing and still be able to travel, um, you know, hotels, vacation rentals. So def definitely pockets of bright spots. Um, you know, obviously the situation is very different from market to market. Uh, some are still in lockdown phase, some are lockdown lifted, some have regained certain uh, degree of normalcy, but um, it's trending in the right direction. Um, but it's certainly too early to tell as things are changing every day. Right. But we remain optimistic with the type of demand and appetite that we're seeing. Yeah, the, the, the one thing I want to add is what makes this really dynamic is the situation literally changes from week to week, right? Yep. Uh, most recently, we've seen some cases pop up here in Hong Kong, uh, a couple of weeks ago in Beijing. Um, and what we are doing as a company, we're constantly watching travel restrictions and see where there is some opportunity. So, for example, people are talking about the Maldives, mid-July, being able to welcome visitors. Or Bali, towards the end of July, domestic, and then in September, perhaps international travelers. So, the whole situation is super fluid, uh, very dynamic, dynamic, quite challenging, uh, but interesting. I do agree, and especially compared with you know the rest of 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 uh, of the world, I think Asia, especially China, is very encouraging based on their numbers, the resume number that that heard from you. And I think Asia, I hope Asia will be the first one, you know, for first region who been bounced back. And apart from that, you know, the pandemic indeed is forced the industry to rethink itself. And do you see this as an opportunity, especially for hotel, to hit the reboot button on how they run and complete rebrand themselves and take a different approach to hospitality? Especially in the past, you know, you have a face with a strong competition with Airbnb and OYO or other similar com uh, companies around the world. If so, how do you think the hotel will react to this approach? Yeah, I think in the short term, we're very, very focused on reassuring travelers. And you may have read in the media that mm. all of the hotel companies are very focused on making sure that we've got the right cleaning protocols in place in our hotels and that we provide a safe environment for travelers when they come to our hotels. I was actually on a webinar with 800 GMs a little earlier, and I spoke about you know, our commitment to clean and, and making sure that we execute on the, on the cleaning protocols that we've talked about. There's clearly some other aspects that where we're re-engineering our model. We're looking at contactless um, check-in. So as much as possible, uh, check-in through the Merit Bonvoy app uh, instead of a physical check-in. We're looking at some separations uh, in certain areas, you know, certain areas, uh, certain countries. Uh, there is more appetite for that than others. So in the short term, we're very, very focused on making sure that we uh, recover. Mm. that we provide assurance for travelers that it is safe to come to our hotels and we walk we will welcome them with open arms how about you talk about no physical check-in even for the fair luxury hotel you also you know have a virtual check-in no what what we're looking at is there's a couple of things you can actually check in and you can also use uh, check in on your app and you can use your uh, mobile phone as the key to enter the guest rooms. So we have uh, deployed it in 3,200 hotels around the world. And that is just, you know, for those guests that don't necessarily want to interact with somebody mm -hmm. close up at the front desk, it's uh, just another option to, uh, to make the check-in a little easier and, and avoid physical contact if that's what you are concerned about. And how about for the accessory? Do you provide, you know, like masks or, you know, sanitizer, this kind of thing as a kind of travel perks? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, there will be sanitation. There's sanitation yeah. kits uh, in the rooms. Um, obviously, uh, temperature checks, masks for both guests as well as our associates, um, hand sanitizer stations. We, um, we've been working- Mario brand? No, we don't, <laughs> we don't need to brand those. Okay, good. No. Yep. Okay, Catherine, due to COVID-19, the once ever so connected world is now become segmented into geographic cluster, shifting the era from globalization to go localization. What do you think it takes for travel companies to stay relevant during this tough time? Yeah, obviously things have been changing a lot, um, you know, since COVID. Um, the, I guess the demand or what you're saying is just more domestic traveling, right? Or in region traveling. Um, it's, 
I can only speak on behalf of the OTA, right? As a technology platform, <laughs> as a technology platform company, I think the advantage that we have is that uh, we're here to connect supply and demand. So whatever the what, whatever the traveler is looking for, we have the product, we have the supply, and you know we we know what they're looking for, and we'll you know double click on um, you know how we can better serve them. Um, so regardless of what they're looking for, uh, it doesn't really change um, our really customer centric mindset in terms mm. of. Uh, just understanding their needs and providing what they need and and go that extra step to help them with it. Um, so, um, yeah, certainly very interesting. A lot of more domestic demand. And hopefully, you know, as um, borders open up, restrictions get lifted, we'll see uh, more short, short haul traveling as well. Uh, but whatever they're looking for, uh, it's a platform for them. But how about for OTA? Are you, you know, like a hotel group? You also promote more on staycation or local activities? Um, we surface whatever uh, we think is uh, interesting for uh, for our customers so um, if the demand or if the uh, if, if the interesting offering is staycation then we we push that more, right? But we're not just fulfilling the demand. I think it was it was re really interesting hearing uh, the earlier panel in terms of oh, what can startup learn learn from corporate? And I think all the gentleman who said over there is that you know stakeholder management. Um, in fact, we work a lot with the government as well. And I think at this stage, the government wants to look a lot at us to tell them what are people searching for, what are the demand, what are the I guess swim lanes and um, you know uh, that that people should consider and, and and start reviewing and having those dialogue as to whether or not we should start opening up those, um, you know, both borders. So we provide a lot of those information to the government as well and a lot of ongoing dialogues and supporting them uh, with, with some of these initiatives. So um, doing, doing our part to help revive the industry and, um, and fulfill the, <laughs> the, the demand and the desire to travel. There is there's clearly a lot of demand for travel. Uh, we, we look at the search data every week. We get our, our consumer analytics team and, and just generally CX, they um, spend a lot of time looking at all sorts of um, search behavior, uh, airlift, occupancy of aircraft, uh, government regulations. I mean, it's a, literally it's a weekly sort of summary that we get of all the activities that point towards potential travel. And uh, so we're really, really focused on it. I'm just like uh, our colleagues from Expedia are, um, and we can't wait to, uh, to start to see some of these travel restrictions lift. Okay, since this conference about the tech, I think we should talk about the tech that you think you could potentially or po positively change the way the people think about the whole travel and the hospitality. Catherine, have you got any thoughts on that? How we utilize, you know, how can we utilize the existing the technology or the future technology to help with this difficult time? Yeah, absolutely. Well, everything we do is about technology, right? As a technology platform company. So uh, anywhere from, you know, supply sourcing to pricing to product development, to demand generation, marketing, customer service is all data and technology driven. Um, you know, obviously COVID creates a lot of very interesting opportunities. Every time there's a crisis, there's a challenge, we something good must come out of it. Um, in this instance, we learned a lot more about, you know, how to better serve our customers. Imagine in the beginning of the crisis, tens of millions of customers calling all at the same time, right? Jam out all our, you know, all our lines. And, you know, even though we have this strategic roadmap to build up all these self-serve capability, uh, technologies as a virtual agent to better serve and make things more automated just so it's easier for everyone, right? Customers don't want to call call us if they don't have to. If they can, uh, can do things themselves. They definitely love to. And with this opportunity, all the resources with the companies dedicated to solving one problem, right? And uh, in a normal day, we just have so many competing priorities. So something really good come out, comes out of this. We can truly leverage technology to uh, really service our customers. And, and you know, a, a related note, it's not really in terms of business, but really work, work, work life, right? I think people talk a lot about it. Um, and uh, I know as a technology company, we've always leveraged technology and uh, uh, to, to enable, enable a business. So when COVID comes, you know, people like, you know, all in a sudden cannot go into the office, shifting to video conferencing, mobile working and, um, you know, and work from home and all that. And it's just really easy transition for us. And, you know, everyone uh, really values this, especially the millennials. So, um, yeah. Yeah, just a couple, uh, a couple of different thoughts uh, and, around this topic. Good. Mm. And how about Brad? From your perspective, is like AR, QER, AI, or smart room? Does it, you know, will Merrill Group adopt this to, you know, to impact the customer experience or enhance the customer experience? Sure. I mean, our primary focus is on making sure that the 
that customers have a fantastic online to on property experience, right? We have 30 brands from the Ritz Carlton, Bulgari, St. Regis to Koya to Marriott. And each of these brands are slightly different position, have a slightly different positioning. So as we think about the room of the future, for example, we have guest rooms that are built at IHQ uh, that sort of depict the room of the future. It includes the internet of things and, and all sorts of gadgets and wizardry that we, uh, that we are contemplating. What we are finding though, is that the customer needs in our guest rooms are relatively straightforward. They want lightning fast internet, they want a big TV, and they want to be able to connect their device to uh, the television. People are not necessarily looking for a lot of technology in terms of changing the curtains electronically or, or sound or sound enabled uh, changing of lights, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing that we're struggling with is it takes about four years to build a hotel, right? From the first moment that we think about it to opening. And if we put in a lot of technology in our guest rooms, it will be obsolete by the time the hotel opens. Technology moves so quickly. So our focus is on data. Our focus is on a really good online to offline experience. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, hospitality is all about people. That's why I think I, I, customer service experience will come first, no matter what. Now it's already, you know, half, really past for half, you know, of 2020. Could you share some key takeaways, summarize no more than eight words? with our travel industry folks, your key takeaway for this? I, I'll put it in a hashtag. Hashtag, we will travel again. I like this, it will travel again. How about Catherine? Uh, revolutionize travel with technology. Oh, okay. That means one is again, travel again or travel together. And the other one is come with technology. Good. The key takeaway highlight that industry must stay from my perspective is creative, agile, adaptable, and cooperative. We must work together, you know, from the travel industry. COVID-19 has changed the idea of physical and geographical boundaries and will inevitably influence the way travelers will think about plan and consumer experience. That's why customer experience will come first. With the travel industry on an indefinite pulse due to all the uncertainty, we can, however, be certain of one thing. When we do travel again, things will be different. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Everyone, I'm sure like in our sessions, there's always a lot of things that we can, that we can learn from. Um, and, you know, and Hannes and all of our guests, thank you. Big round of applause again. Thank you, Hannes. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Bart.